Hello grade tens, welcome back to another video with me, Ms. Martins. This is a chemistry video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at mixtures. And in particular, we're going to be looking at homogeneous or homogeneous and heterogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures, depending on how you say it. So I'll be giving you all the theory that you need to know, examples of each, and we'll be looking at how to answer questions based on this in your exam. Let's jump right in. In the previous video, we discussed that matter can be divided into pure substances and mixtures. So if you've missed that video, we are going into more detail about this, link in the description box below. But in today's video, we're focusing on mixtures, and in particular, the two different types of mixtures, homogeneous or homogeneous versus heterogeneous or heterogeneous. So I showed in the previous video how that kind of flow diagram broke into this more detailed one. And in this diagram, you can see the definitions of homogeneous or homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. But before we get into that, what is a mixture? So a mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances in varying amounts, and they're not chemically bound together. So what this means is I can take a bunch of pure substances, whether these are elements or whether these are compounds or molecules, and you mix them together or you throw them together. That gets me a mixture. You get different types of mixtures, obviously, as you can see over here. But what's important to understand is that there are no chemical bonds between the different components of a mixture. So the example that I gave in the previous video, and I think it's a very good example, is if you think about salt water. So if you take salt, table salt, as in NaCl, I'll write it over here for you. NaCl is table salt. And you take H2O, pure water. And you add the salt to the water and you stir it up. You're going to get what we call a solution, which is a type of a mixture. Now, what I need you to understand is that although you can no longer see the salt, all you see is a kind of water liquid mixture, the salt is dissolved in the water. However, the salt and the water are not bound together chemically, there are no chemical bonds. What that means is that the salt stays salt. So NaCl stays NaCl, and water, H2O, stays water, H2O. It's not like you can write a chemical equation for this. It's not like you can say, oh, NaCl plus H2O, and then it gives you a new compound. Absolutely not. They're not chemically bound together. They stay separately. And because they're not chemically bound together, what this means is that we can use physical methods to separate them. So for example, evaporation. If I leave the salt water mixture on a counter in the sun, eventually the water will evaporate. So the water will escape out the open glass, leaving the salt inside. So I've separated them. They're not chemically bound together. Now, the example that I just gave you with salt water is an example of a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. And as I mentioned earlier, I did show you the definition. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture of uniform, uniform means the same, composition, in which all the components are in the same phase. You can't see, you cannot distinguish between the components. So if you think about salt dissolved in a glass of water, if you look at that, if you've dissolved it properly, you can't look at the glass and say, oh, there's the salt and there's the water and there's the salt. It just looks like one thing. It's homogeneous. An example of a heterogeneous or heterogeneous mixture is silly example, if I have oil and I throw it in a glass of water. The oil will sit on top of the water because of the difference in densities. They don't mix. It's called an emulsion. So this is a mixture of non-uniform composition. It's not uniform. You can see the different components easily with the naked eye. So that is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous. And that's basically mixtures. Before we get into that in more detail, just remember that in mixtures, Substances retain, in other words, they keep their own properties. They keep their own properties. So in the salt water example, the water still has properties of water. It can still evaporate, all those things. The salt still has properties of salt. We can separate it using physical methods. As I mentioned, evaporation is one example of a physical method or something like filtration. So if I pass the mixture through a filter, some of the stuff will be left behind, the other stuff will pass through. A new compound is not made, no chemical bonds. Some or all of the phases of matter are involved. It's very, very, very important. 
So let's look more closely at the two different types of mixtures. Homogenous or homogeneous, it depends on how you say it, is a mixture of uniform composition, cannot distinguish between the different components. So this is air, for example, as I've mentioned, it's a mixture of all the different types of gases, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, CO2. You cannot see the differences. It all looks the same. It's a mixture of these pure substances. And the other example that I spoke about was, for example, dissolving a solute like salt or sugar in water, which is a solvent. It creates what we call a solution. Okay? Components are not visually distinguishable from each other. The composition is uniform, which means the same throughout. We can also call it a solution. As I mentioned, we've got a solute dissolved in a solvent, causing a solution. That is homogeneous. A heterogeneous or heterogeneous is a mixture of non-uniform composition. You can easily tell the difference between the components. So this is oil in water or two different types of oils mixed together, like salad dressing. This is a salad. That is a heterogeneous mixture or pizza or something like that. So the composition is not uniform. You can see the difference in the components. So for example, like muddy water, you can see the water, you can see the mud, you can see the stones, you can see the sand. Okay, normally two or more phases are present. And the oil water example, an example of that is what we call an emulsion. So olive oil and water, liquid with a higher density sits on top. So the oil and the water down below, if you shake it up or if you mix it up, you get these little bubbles that eventually make their way back to the surface and form a layer once again. Some more examples of homogenous and heterogeneous, and here I list it out. And I know that this can be confusing for some students. Some students say, ma'am, I don't get it. Why is that not homogenous? Why is that not heterogeneous? One that is quite difficult to understand is soda water or carbonated water or something like that. Um, let's think about carbonated water or um, sparkling water. Why do you think that's a heterogeneous mixture? Well, the reason why that's a heterogeneous mixture is because you can see the bubbles in the water. So the bubbles are the gas and then the water is the liquid. So remember, for heterogeneous mixtures, there's normally two or more phases present. So there we can see some examples. And once again, you need to know the definition. So here's the definition of homogenous. Here's the definition of heterogeneous. And let's fill in this table together based on what we know about pure substances versus mixtures. So first things first, sugar, water. That is not a pure substance because although water, pure water is a pure substance, we have got some sugar in it now. So that is a mixture. It is a homogenous mixture because if the water is warm enough, if we dissolve the sugar properly, we cannot tell the difference between the components. Water and alcohol, that is also a homogenous mixture because you cannot tell the difference if you mix water and alcohol. Salad dressing, you should know that salad dressing has oil in it, so that would be a heterogeneous mixture. Carbon dioxide is CO2. That is a compound, it's a pure substance. O2, this is quite a difficult one. This is technically what we call a molecule. So it wouldn't fit under compound because it has two of the same atoms, an oxygen and an oxygen. It's technically a diatomic element, but it's a molecule. What about this one? Pause the screen, try it, and see if you can get to the correct answer. Right, so air, as I've mentioned, is a homogenous mixture. It's all the different gases together. You can't tell the difference. If you look at the air, you can't say, oh, there's the oxygen, there's the nitrogen. It just looks like air. <laughs> Soda water is heterogeneous because of the bubbles, the gas bubbles. Okay, now be careful. Copper and steel. Hmm, copper. Copper is on the periodic table. It's CU which means that it's a pure substance, it's an element. Be careful of steel. Steel, although it sounds like an element, is not an element. It's not on the periodic table. Steel is actually a homogenous mixture. Now you might be confused. Steel is what we call an alloy. 
So it's like, for example, if you take iron, iron is an element, it's a pure substance, and you mix it with other types of metals, we get an alloy, which is a mixture. But if you look at steel, you can't see, hmm, that part is iron and that part is that metal and that, it all looks like the same uniform composition. So it's a homogenous mixture. Sulfur powder and iron filings. Hmm, what about that? So sulfur powder and iron filings. That is a hetero heterogeneous mixture. You can see the little iron filings in the powder. And remember, mixtures can be separated using physical methods. So how would you separate the iron filings from the sulfur powder? Keep in mind that iron is ferromagnetic. It's magnetic. So what you would do is you would use magnetism to separate it. Okay, cool. Remember, once more, that mixtures can be separated by physical processes because they are not chemically bound. So as I just mentioned, separating sulfur and iron filings can be done using a magnet, just like that. This is called distillation over here, and then we've got filtration over here. So here's the different types of separation methods. I will go through this in more detail in another video, but just to show you very, very quickly. And that basically concludes the difference between mixtures. I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope to see you in more videos soon. Click the playlist below for more videos like this. Subscribe for more. Bye, everyone.